Was that a great introduction? I mean, in all fairness. And he's known me for a long time. I used to have to get those. Place. We, we had one, one day, day, one day, we're going to do great in North Carolina. We just left. We just left. You know where we were. And the crowds we're getting here are amazing. No, the enthusiasm is so incredible. But you know what is nice when you have people like Rudy that really know you and they speak from the heart? As opposed to every once in a while, and they're very nice. They get up and they've endorsed you or they're with you. But they don't know you. In fact, you've only known them for about 12 minutes, right? And they say, Donald Trump and this and that. And it doesn't mean the same. I've known Rudy for, I guess, close to 30 years. I hate to admit that long because it's like a long time. But I've known him for a long time. And he was a great mayor, did a great job in everything he's ever done, and a special guy. And I hope that if I win, we're going to be taking him and Chris Christie and General Flynn and my great sheriff, I'll tell you, we have uh, so many different, so many different people that are on this campaign. We have, we're loaded up with great sheriffs and great people. You know, we have just amazing people. We're going to be bringing fantastic people on board. And I've gotten to know so many people doing this. And one, somebody said before, you know, you should mention some of the people. Ben Carson is such an incredible guy. Ben Carson, great guy. He's a great person, great human being. And some of the people that, in all fairness, you know, we had 17 people. Some of the people I ran against, I got to know them, and they're good. I didn't treat them very nicely, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, that's all right. But we're going to bring a lot of the people that you know and a lot of people that you respect, and we're going to do it based on talent, based on all of the things that we need for the different positions. We have such talent in this country, and we're not using it. We're just not using it. Such incredible talent. And speaking of talent, so what's with this voter ID in North Carolina, right? What's with this? You know, I keep talking about rigged system. I watch Bernie Sanders work, work, work. Poor old Bernie, he's working, working, working. And I said, I think the system's rigged. You know, the superdelegates. What happened to Bernie? Where is he? What happened? But we're going to get a lot of Bernie uh, voters. I think we really will, because I talk about trade, and I've been talking about it for years, many years, before I was doing this. Hey, I've been doing this for like, what, 15 months now? Uh, before, long before I was doing this, I was talking about trade and what a disgusting situation it is for our country. Do you know that two days ago I met a supporter, and he's in the tile business. Great guy. But he said his business is being decimated by foreign countries where they make tile and the tile's not nearly as good and he can't send his tile to those countries because there's a 27 percent tax and it's very tough but they can send their stuff in here and their stuff by the way is not as good as what this man makes and you know the trade thing it's all like we talk about free trade and i want trade and i'm not an isolationist by the way i want free trade but I want it to be great trade for our country. It's got to be a two-way street. It's got to be a two-way street. And it will be a two-way street again. It will be a two-way street. But he was telling me how impossible it was for him. In this case, it was China, but it's really almost everybody. How impossible it was for him to do business in China. And not for long. And we'll do business in China. We're going to do business in China. But we're going to do it on an equal footing. Right now, they can dump their product. And you know what I'm talking about, the steel they dump. And I think they dump it to put our steel companies out of business so that we have to go to China to buy the stuff. And you know what? Not going to happen anymore, folks. It's not going to happen anymore. And if you think Hillary Clinton knows anything about it, number one. I know about it. But even if she did, it wouldn't matter because she's controlled by her donors and her special interests. Totally controlled. 
by her donors and special interests. So if she knew, it wouldn't make any difference. Wouldn't make any difference whatsoever. So we're going to bring back our trade. You know, somebody said to me, what's the most important? Well, there's so many things. We got to repeal Obamacare, replace it. We got to have strong borders. I mean, there's just so many things. You can go on and on and on. We could stand here for three days. We could tell you what's wrong. And so many of these things are so easy to fix. One of the things that amazes me, when I talk about trade, I want to have trade. I think it's good, the concept of trade, but it's got to be fair. But here's the thing. I say, I'm going to renegotiate NAFTA, which is a disaster. For, by the way, in North Carolina, and virtually every other place, in all fairness, but they have ripped businesses from your guts. They've taken businesses out of this state, out of Ohio, out of Michigan. Michigan has just been decimated by NAFTA, the auto plans. You've got to see what they're building in Mexico. They are building some of the greatest, biggest, most modern plants in the world for cars, for computers, for everything. And you know what, folks? I think that's fine. But we're not going to help them. We're going to fight for ourselves. We're going to have a policy very simple. America first. Remember that. America first. So we have essentially two people running. And Hillary made it through a small field. I made it through a large field. And she got through. I got through. We're stuck with each other, which is fine. And I'll tell you what, if you knew where she stood on the Second Amendment, on the raising where she basically wants to take your safety away, she wants to take your guns away. And by the way, if she appoints Supreme Court justices, meaning if she gets the option to appoint, meaning a very sad day in this country, because if she became president, she would do a terrible job. This would be four more years of Obama, and we don't want four more years of Obama. We don't want ISIS. We don't want regulations. We don't want high taxes. All of these things would, would be an extension this would be an extension, a four-year extension of Obama. And I think in many ways, it may be, end up being worse. So if she gets to appoint Supreme Court justices, you know, the next president will appoint probably three, but it could even be four or five. That's the way the cards fall. Will be a record-setting number, possibly. And we had Judge Scalia as an example. That was supposed to be Justice Scalia was supposed to be there for a lot longer and that he was taken from us and he was a great guy and we are going to appoint justices you know i named 11 people that are highly highly vetted highly vetted uh, heritage and different people and gone through different people that i respect conservative people smart people and very importantly and the real standard if we could find as close to Justice Scalia, because he was a terrific United States Supreme Court judge. Now, if on the other hand, if Hillary appoints, if Hillary appoints justices of the Supreme Court, you're going to have a lot of problems, folks. You're going to have a lot of problems. Because, you know, if they're on the court for 20 or 25 years, and you have four of them, let's say, or three of them, or five of them, I mean, we're gone for like, what, 75 years, meaning we're gone as a country because we will be a large scale version of Venezuela. That's what's going to happen. And you see what's happening in Venezuela. So we can't let it happen. We can't let it happen. Now, just a couple of things. And I wrote these down a week ago and I've said it and I mean it. But I said unstable Hillary Clinton lacks the judgment. Remember when Bernie Sanders talked about judgment? He said, she has bad judgment. Now, when he said it, nobody picked it up. And when I say it, nobody picks it up either, because you can't say bad, because the press will never pick up anything that's correct or accurate or bad about it. No, it's such a, it is such a double standard. 
But Bernie Sanders said that Hillary Clinton had bad judgment. And he said it many times, and he said it over and over. And then I think he was really asked not to say that anymore, and he stopped. Because they were perhaps more civil than we were on our side. We would never stop. But she has bad judgment. Her temperament, a word she uses all the time, is terrible. It's a loser's temperament. She's got the temperament of a loser. I have the temperament of a winner. And we have to win again. We have to win again. She said about me not so long ago my tone. She said, I don't like the tone. T-O-N-E. I don't like the tone of Donald Trump. Now, in the Middle East, they're chopping off heads. They're drowning people in steel cages. They're burying people in the sand. And she doesn't like my tone. I think it's time maybe for a little tougher tone, folks. You know, no fair. Time for a tougher tone. So, the bad judgment alone, you can't pick her. Hey, look, whether you look at Libya, you look at Syria, you take a look at the migration. Take a look at this. She wants to put, and I said 500%. And the press said I was wrong. It wasn't the right number. 500% more people coming in from Syria. We don't know who they are, where they come from. She wants, and I said, 500% more than President Obama. And he's got them pouring in, right? And the press said I was wrong. You know what the real number was? 550%. I couldn't believe it. I was on the low side. I was on the low side. 550% more than we have coming in right now. And you know what? This is going to be, in my opinion, and I've been pretty right on these things. I said, don't go into Iraq. I was right about it. I said, and by the way, once we were in Iraq, getting out the way Obama got out caused problems that are going to be very hard to solve. I said, irreparable. What they have done, what they have done in terms of getting out of Iraq, ISIS comes about. You know, I said before, also in North Carolina, I said that if they gave a trophy for the most valuable player, you call it in sports, most valuable player award, the winner of the trophy for ISIS would probably have to be Hillary Clinton, right? <laughs> Hillary Clinton. And now she's going to tell you how to get rid of ISIS. She's going to tell you how, because her and Obama, and I guarantee you that if Obama had the choice to do again, now he has to go and play the game, but if he had the choice to do again for Secretary of State, and if he knew what took place in the Middle East and other places, I guarantee you he would never have picked Hillary Clinton. He would never have picked her. He would not have gone that way. Now, you're not going to hear that. I'm sure he tells that to his wife, but that's about it. Because he can't. But that's the way it is. So she, uh, she is uh, just a person that, if she's president, we're going to have problems like you've never had before. She talks about toughness with Russia. Wouldn't it be nice if we actually got along with people? Wouldn't that be a nice thing? Okay. You know, Russia is a nuclear nation, has nuclear weapons. You know, she's tough. They talk about Crimea. I answered a question perfectly. They were talking about Russia and what I would do with Ukraine and Russia. But, you know, by the time this is now taking place, Crimea is already a part of Russia, essentially, right? And this happened on Obama's watch. So they put out a thing about me. I didn't know foreign policy. I didn't know foreign policy. Why did you let Crimea go to Russia? They don't want to mention this. They don't want to mention the fact that when I was asked about NATO, that I said, look, NATO's obsolete. Now, I'm not an expert on NATO, but I have a lot of common sense. I'd have great business sense. I made a lot of money and I had great success. But, but you know what? Built a great, great company, far greater than anybody even understands. But, but you know what? I said, NATO's obsolete. And they all smiled and laughed. Oh, Donald Trump, he said it's obsolete. Don't forget, this was done for the Soviet Union many, many, many years ago. Now, let's say Russia, tough, so it's okay for Russia to, right? Let's say it's fine. 
But this was done originally for the Soviet Union. It morphs into Russia. That's fine. But we have a new threat. It's called terrorism. And they're not equipped for terrorism. They don't even have the right countries for terrorism. And I said this actually to Wolf Blitzer of CNN. But I said this. And people smiled. Oh, isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? Three days later, they started saying, Trump is right. It's really obsolete. You know, you ever hear the expression, you can't see the forest for the trees, right? Right? You can't see the forest for the trees. You have guys, good people, they study NATO. They're so close. They're so close that they can't see what's going on. So all of a sudden, three, four days later, somebody came out said, you know, Trump's got a point. And then a couple of months ago on the Wall Street Journal on the front page, I read, because I said terrorism. It's obsolete because it's not covering terrorism the way it should be. And then all of a sudden I read a big story, front page story in the Wall Street Journal, NATO to develop terrorism division. And I was only mentioned like one eighth of one sentence that I essentially wasn't happy. They could have given me a little more credit, but that's okay. I don't need the credit. I want our country to be great again. That's what I really want. That's my credit. But then I said a second thing with NATO. I said a second thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. I said a second thing with NATO. I said, we have too many countries that aren't paying their way. Because I had heard it. And I don't study it. I mean, that NATO was, I, I'll tell you what, when I was asked a question about NATO, I give you my word, it's not my, you know, I'm a business guy. In, in my whole life, I was never asked about NATO, right? But I gave a great answer. And they've actually changed NATO because of what I said. Okay? Now, it's not even because of what I said. It's because of what we said. You know, folks, just so you know something, we have a movement going on here. This is a movement. This is a movement. This is a real great movement. This is a beautiful thing to watch. No matter where we go, the, the crowds, the enthusiasm. I mean, this thing, we started today here. I said, let's stop there. It's great. I have a friend that lives in the area. I said, all right, I'll come up. I mean, it's amazing. And by the way, I love the military. Is this military or what? I love the military. And, and we're going to take care of the military. We're going to take care of the military. You know, I have to say, I'm in a lot of businesses, but I'm in the real estate business primarily. And I get so many listings of military bases. This one's for sale, that one's. And at one point, a few years ago, I said, wow, how many bases can we sell? You know, they're getting rid of so many places and so many bases. And you know, the one thing, and I'm a big believer in cutting, and we can do a lot of cutting and a lot of pruning and have things be better. Look at the VA as an example. How badly run is the VA? How badly run is the VA? And yet it's like a corrupt enterprise. But how badly run is that? And that's not just a question of money. It's a question of management. It's a question of style. Our veterans are not being treated as well as a lot of people that come into our country illegally. Oh, and by the way, they said my wife, Melania, might have come in illegally. Can you believe that one? No, no, no. They said, headlines, maybe she came in illegally, maybe. Let me tell you one thing. She has got it so documented, so she's going to have a little news conference over the next couple of weeks. That's good. That's good. I love it. I love it. They said, Melania Trump may have come into our country illegally, and how would that be for Donald Trump to be talking? Here's the only problem. She came in totally legally. I mean, you know, so that's what I'm going to say. All right, but you'll see it in a little while. I said to her, no, no, let it simmer for a little while. Let them go wild. Let it simmer. And then let's have a little news conference and have some fun. But they have to come in. And by the way, we want people to come in to our country. But they have to come in legally. They have to come in legally. Now, Hillary Clinton, I just have to go because these facts are pretty obvious. 
But we have to go over them like one last time because we're dealing with a person that doesn't know how to tell the truth. We're dealing with a very dishonest human being. You know, remember the word? Do you remember the word short circuit? Can you imagine if I said, oh, I had a short circuit? Headlines all over the world, right? With her, it's a little story. In fact, I watched that interview with Chris Wallace at Fox. I watched it and I saw her say lots of bad things. You know, I mean, like lots of bad things. The lie on the lie on the lie. I mean, it got to be like multiples, right? So many things. How did she get away with it? Her greatest achievement in life will be getting away with what she got away with. That's in my opinion. I see this guy, Blagojevic, and I know him because he was on The Apprentice, right? The guy's got in jail for 14 years. And he just, I guess, lost an appeal today or something. He's in jail for 14 years, and Hillary Clinton is allowed to delete 33,000 emails. Think of that. Think of that. What's going on? What's going on? Sad. Sad. No, honestly, folks, it's a very sad situation. Our country has been set back. The world watched that whole situation. That world has been watching, and it's very, very bad. And I'll tell you what, it speaks so badly, so badly of our country because everybody knows that she should not be running for the presidency right now. She should not be running. Everybody knows that. Go over a couple of the, go over a couple of the statements and we'll do it quickly because, you know, it looks, and now they say the foundation, the foundation. Well, they're not going to get her on that. They're not going to do anything with the foundation, right? They're looking at the foundation. Give me a break. Hillary Clinton claimed the reason for her illegal use of private insecure email, totally insecure, was that it was more convenient to use just one device, okay? Fact, the FBI director said Hillary used several devices and numerous mobile devices. And therefore, it was a lie. False statement number two, I mean, we go, we could go false statement number 30. Hey, wouldn't you love to see what some of those 33,000 emails are? Wouldn't you love to see it though? I, I tell you, it's very, it's very, it's very, honestly, it's a very sad situation. Very sad situation. But how do you get away with it? You say, by the way, uh, we won't be giving in 33,000 emails, but we subpoenaed the emails. I assume they subpoenaed them, right? We want the emails. Oh, well, we deleted 33,000. Oh, well, that's okay. That's fine. No problem. Can you imagine if somebody else did that? Yeah, tell, tell Petraeus about it. False statement number two. In her testimony to Congress, Hillary Clinton said she turned over all of her work-related emails. All of it. The FBI director said Hillary failed to turn over several thousand work-related emails, including some emails that were classified. What's going on? What's going on? False statement number three. In her testimony to Congress, Hillary Clinton said, there was nothing marked classified on my emails, either sent or received. Now, you know that's false, and that's been proven. And I could go over page after page after page, and it won't ever change, folks. We have a person that's very dishonest. We have a person that shouldn't be able to run. We have a person that how she escaped this unbelievable situation is considered one of the great wonders of the world. I'll tell you right now. Sad. It's very sad. So look, 
A few things. Hillary, comparison, wants to raise taxes tremendously. Trump, Trump, that's me, Trump, wants to lower them very substantially. You saw that yesterday. Hillary, crooked Hillary, she is crooked as a $3 bill. Crooked Hillary wants to expand regulations. And by the way, regulations, in my opinion, and I go around, I'm all over the country, meet unbelievable people. If they had a choice of having their taxes reduced or their regulations pretty much wiped out to a large extent. I mean, we need certain regulations environmentally we need. And, you know, we need certain. But we ha it's so excessive. You can't start businesses. You can't keep businesses going. I was amazed to find out that people would rather have their regulations reduced substantially than have their taxes reduced. And we're just about the highest tax nation in the world. That tells you what's going on. All right. Hillary Clinton wants to shut down energy production. She wants to fire, get rid of all the miners. She doesn't want any miners. Any miners in here, by the way? Now, we're going to expand energy. We're going to expand all forms of energy. But we're going to expand energy, right? All right. All right? Hillary, think of this. Hillary wants, oh, look at that. She wants to appoint far left judges who will destroy our constitution i want judges who will support and defend our constitution right hillary wants to open our borders and i want to have strong borders and we're going to have the wall and mexico's going to pay for the wall right it's going to happen I have to say, it's very interesting, because a lot of the people, the politicians that I deal with, they come to me and they say, Donald, you don't really mean build a walk. You know, they're not in the construction business like I am and like some of the people. They really mean it, too. I mean, they mean it. They wouldn't have any, any chance of building because they wouldn't know where to begin. But they come up and they say, you don't really mean you're going to build a wall, do you? You're kidding, right? You know, you're I said, no, no, it's easy. Precast plank, bing, boom. See the ceiling? That ceiling is a little low compared to this wall. It's not a low ceiling. It's a little low compared to our wall. But think of it. So they come up to me, and they really mean it. They're good people. They come up. Some aren't good people, actually. But they come up. They say, you don't really mean build a wall. And then I convince them, yeah, you can do it really easy. It goes up fast. By the way, honestly, a very small version of it. But do you ever see these highways? where they put up the walls along the highways. It always amazed me. Somebody buys a house along a highway, so they know what they're buying, right? They, do you know what I'm about to say? The money that we waste. So they buy a house, and it's along a highway. And the highway's a little noisy, a little everything. But that's why they bought the house. They bought it for a low price, because they don't want to be along a the highway. They don't want the, the whatever it is. And they don't want the noise. So they buy this house, and they have it. And they're fine. And then they get the government to build a wall and make the house more valuable. And the government spends a fortune on the wall. But take those walls, and they go up like magic. Now, make it much, much bigger, OK? I don't mean a little bit bigger. I mean, like, if you get up there, man, you don't want to. You want to be very careful getting down. And walls do work. Just ask Israel. How do walls work, Israel? They work work, right? right? All you have to do is ask, ask Israel about walls. Ask Israel about walls. So we're going to build the wall. And I also tell these folks when they come up and they talk about it's impossible to build a wall, right? You know, and I really mean it. Look at the highways. They build these things all over the place. I don't even know why. I don't know why. They build so many of them. They're putting them all over the place. I want somebody that's, you know, where it's going to help us, okay? It's got to help us, but we're going to build a wall. Then they come up and they say, you can't do it. And I say, well, wait, take a look at China. They have a thing called the Great Wall of China. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of it. A little wall that goes 13,000 miles, right? 13, 
13,000 miles, the Great Wall of China. 13,000. You know what 13,000 miles is? I mean, we're talking about a serious wall. We're talking about a wall like there is no wall. What's Canada? Like five or 6,000, right? So we're talking about really much more than twice Canada, along Canada. So here we have a situation where politicians are telling me about the one. I refer them back 2,000 years. This wall was built 2,000 years ago. This, by the way, if anyone's ever seen the Great Wall of China, this is a serious wall. This is not a wall built with hydraulic equipment. This was built with hydraulic muscles. So it's 13,000 miles, and it was built 2,000 years ago. So we have 2,000 miles, of which we really need only 1,000 because we have a lot of natural borders, right? We have a lot of natural barriers. And so we have 1,000 miles. China had 13,000. We have, And we can use Caterpillar tractors. I'm not using Komatsu, by the way. I'm using... Or we'll use John Deere tractors, right? You like John Deere. Or we'll use Jacobson. You know Jacobson? Good company. I use Jacobson, too. I use a lot. You know how much John Deere and Jacobson equipment I've bought over the years? And Jacobson's here, too. You know that, right? They, I, have a, I have a very big property, right? I have a very, very big property in North Carolina. And I have John Deere, and I have Jacobson, I have all of them. But I bought millions and millions and millions of dollars of equipment, millions of dollars worth of equipment. And I try when I can to buy made in the USA. I try. Sometimes you can't. Because sometimes they devalue the dollar or the, their currency so much. They devalue, like China, is the grand master of devaluation. And so now are other countries. I mean, it doesn't take so much to figure it out. What takes a lot is to get away with it, because what they do is cheating. And I want to buy, when we can, made in the USA. Remember the old days we have to sign, we had signs made in the USA, made in America. It was like a, have you seen what happened to it? I think if I win, we're going to sort of go back to made in the USA or made in America. Sure. It's true. We don't see that anymore, right? You don't see it. That used to be a sign of quality. When you had a car or when you had something made in the USA, made in America, both of them, and you don't see them anymore. We're going to go back because we're going to make so many things again, folks. We're not making product anymore. Our, our plants. I tell the story all the time because to me it's a great story. I have a friend who's probably in the world the biggest builder of plants. He builds plants. That's what he does. Great guy. And he builds plants, massive plants for cars, for computers, for like anything. If it's a plant, he builds it. And I said, how are you doing? He said, I'm doing good. Business is good. Really? How's the United States doing? Not so great. I said, well, how's business good? He said, Donald, you've got to see what's happening in Mexico. What's happening in Mexico is the eighth wonder of the world. We're building some of the biggest, most beautiful plants you've ever seen. He'd rather build them here. Okay? He'd much rather build them here. But that's not the way our government works, because we allow this to happen. And they're taking our businesses from North Carolina and from all these other states, Ohio, Big Lake, Michigan, tremendous what they're doing. They're taking all of the, they're taking tremendous auto business. You look at Ford, you look at these other car companies, and they're going there. And we're like sort of left holding the bag. That's not going to happen anymore, folks. Okay? Not going to happen. Now, so they say, and I've been watching, I've been watching for years. I've been watching for years. And I've been seeing our country, our government officials who don't know what they're doing. All sorts of tax abatements and low interest loans and zero interest loans. And they'll give a zero interest loan and somebody will move anyway. They'll say, hey, let's get out of here. They forgot to put a restrictive covenant on. But I've been watching them fight moving companies for so long. And all you have to do is use the example of Carrier. They build air conditioners. They announced to Indianapolis, Indiana, a place that I love because we had such a big victory. And Bobby Knight really helped, I will tell you. And Lou Holtz and so many others. But Bobby Knight was in there campaigning with me. But we had a big victory. We won a massive victory there. And one of the reasons was Carrier fired their employees. And they're moving to Mexico. 
And here's how you stop it, folks. You say, I'm going to charge a 35% tax on every air conditioner that you make and sell into the United States. And go through a very strong border, by the way. And here's what happens. Number one, if you say it soon enough, nobody leaves. Now, let's say somebody called me 10 years ago and they put me in charge of companies not leaving the United States. Okay, that's my official. I am secretary of companies not leaving the United States. I don't think one company would have left the United States, okay? I really don't. I might not have been nice. Who cares? It's like some of the people that I have negotiated. I will have, we have some of the greatest business leaders in the world that have endorsed me and they want me to win because they know I know what I'm talking about. And we will use these people. Some of them are not nice people. Do we care? Do we care? We have very nice people right now. We have such nice people that they don't put America first. They put America ninth. They don't care about America. Many of them are political hacks. Many are diplomats that have no understanding of business or anything else. So here's the story, folks. We are going to stop this barrage of companies leaving. You have people right now in this room think they have a good job and their company is negotiating to move to Mexico or another place. Or their company is being taken over by China or, and then it would be closed and they'll take the product. But China doesn't even do that. They just sell things into the country. And you want to try doing business in China? It's almost impossible because they make it so difficult to get your product in. I have friends that are manufacturers. They cannot get their product in. And if they do get it in, they have to pay a massive tax. And yet China comes in. So we have a $500 billion trade deficit with China. We have a tremendous trade deficit, like around $60 billion with Mexico. That's why when I say Mexico will pay for the wall, everyone says, oh, you have to be. Well, the trade deficit is massive compared to the cost of the wall. And we're talking about we lose so much money on trade with Mexico. And that's not including the drugs that pour across the border. We're not including that. That's a separate category. And we're going to stop that. And by the way, Border Patrol, the Border Patrol agents of our country, 16,500 have endorsed me. They've never endorsed a presidential candidate. Never. Because we're not going to play games. And Sheriff Joe Arpaio of Arizona, Sheriff Joe endorsed me. That's pretty good. So we're going to have strong borders. We're going to have strong borders. We're going to have great trade deals. We're going to renegotiate NAFTA. And we're going to make deals. Instead of taking our companies, we're going to make the deals fair. And if they were, if they, I'll tell you, honestly, very simple. If they don't want to renegotiate, you know what's going to happen? Bye-bye. We're finished. We're finished. That was a deal signed by Bill Clinton. And he never had to suffer the ravages because he left that to others. But I looked at New England when I was campaigning. I got to know so much about this country, much more than I ever thought I could even fathom. I got to know the people of states, even upstate New York. I know New York, but I got to know the people upstate New York and in different parts of Long Island that were absolutely, it's ravaged. What's happened is horrible. You see factories, you see factories that are old but beautiful buildings and they're literally falling apart. The rain, the snow, the salt, what, what's happened? These buildings are coming down. And you look back 25, 30 years, and you can see people working in those factories by the thousands and the tens of thousands. And now they're all either unemployed or having jobs that aren't as good. As an example, many people in this room made more money 18 years ago, okay? And they didn't work as hard as they're working now. And now they have, in many cases, two jobs. And that's why we have the crowds. And that's why we have the movement. And that's why we're going to win on November 8th. I really believe that. Now, for the military people in the room, we're doing great with the military. I think we're going to win the military. Like, is anyone not going to vote for us? Any military people in the room? Raise your hand. Who is going to vote for Trump of the military people in the room? I think. Looks like a very similar number. I think. And you know who else likes Trump? The police. The police. 
We have so many endorsements from the police. The police are not treated properly. They are not treated properly. So here's the story, folks. We're going to make our country great again. Great again. And we're going to be thought of as the smart country again. And we're going to have good relationships. I have great relations with China. I can't believe I just signed a lease, an extension with the largest bank in the world that happens to be in China, largest in the world. And I said to my people, you sure they want it? Because I hit them pretty hard. But this is nothing personal. You know, like on The Apprentice that I did rather successful. I said, it's not personal, it's just business, right? You know, it's one of those things. But I said, are you sure they want to sign? Yeah. And I brought the people in my office, top executives. I said, good, I'm glad you're signing. You are signing, aren't you? You're really signing. I said, that's okay. I don't care. You know, it's a great location. I'd sign somebody else if I had to. But they wanted to resign their lease. They were there. They just extended their lease. And they said, no, Mr. Trump, in China, we have great respect for you because you tell the truth. Can you believe that? Isn't that great? Isn't that great? So, so we're going to help the NRA, who are great people, and they're fighting hard. They're fighting hard. Chris and Wayne and all of the people at the NRA, these are people that love our country. But the Second Amendment is under siege, believe me. If Hillary Clinton gets in, the Second Amendment, it is under siege. And that's a very important thing. So here's the story, folks. Here's the story. We are going to make America great again. We are going to make America strong again. We are going to make America safe again. And we are going to have a policy of America first, okay? And on November 8th, I'll be back. I'll be back so much to North Carolina because this is very important. You are going to get so sick and tired of me. You can watch those phony Hillary Clinton ads all over television with Wall Street money. And a lot of people, and let me tell you, the ads are false, by the way. They're just eh, mostly false. But let, let me just tell you, I'm going to be back a lot. I'm going to be back so much that you're going to say, please, please, don't come back anymore. We'll vote for you. Please, please. But I just want to thank the people of North Carolina. We're going to have a tremendous victory on November 8th. I'll be back a lot. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Thank you.